Several hundred uh, folks that rallied in front of the White House, Daniel Ellsberg, Ray McGovern, Chris Hedges, were speakers. It was unfortunate, the depressing thing was that the mainstream press did not cover the, the event. And at the same time as Obama, Obama was announcing yeah. that we would stay basically, you know, ongoing war. Group of people that uh, were recently arrested in Washington, D.C. Or five, there were actually a total of 17 Minnesotans who traveled to the White House. And of the 17 Minnesotans, eight got arrested, um, you know, basically trying to get a message to Obama uh, not to continue these awful wars. You know, people had postcards, we delivered a petition, we also spoke out on the, on the need to expose war crimes and not to uh, prosecute and to torture uh, Bradley Manning and, uh, and to prosecute uh, WikiLeaks and to uh, adhere to the First Amendment rights. How long were you detained? Uh, the whole thing was a four or five hours, but we weren't we weren't detained all that long. It was just long enough to process us. us. Um, some of us paid fines. I would say the majority of us paid a hundred dollar fine, but uh, a couple of us chose not to. Sure, I'm Steve McEwen of Veterans for Peace. And what was your feeling about what happened? Well, my feeling is is that uh, this went on too too long. We had uh, about 500 people there. And, uh, probably about 300 veterans, and there's 132 that were arrested. Uh, a lot of those people are uh, Vietnam veterans, but they're from all wars. And uh, it's just sad. I mean, there's there's just uh, nothing. Nothing's good enough for the people who want to keep making more. One of the reasons for my sadness was in Baltimore. We were waiting for the air plane to come in for 24 hours. Is there was a lot of troops that were coming home for Christmas, and I got the opportunity to speak with one in particular. Just got in a basic training, and he reminded me so much of myself at that age. You know, coming home from Christmas, and there he is again, and we're doing the same thing. As we are, and so that's part of my sadness right there. Uh, my name is Gerald Ganan. I'm with the Veterans for Peace. Uh, I just want people to know that the uh, Veterans for Peace chose the date of the 16th because it's the anniversary of the Veterans March into Washington in 1931 in the depths of the Depression. The veterans of World War I had been promised a bonus that had never been paid. And like many of the people in this country then and today, they were hurting. And 100,000 veterans invaded Washington and occupied Washington and built shacks and shanties on the mall and they said we're not leaving until we get our bonus and that's what we were honoring and we were there demanding our bonus and our bonus is peace we want peace Absolutely. and we're going to keep doing this until we get it and we'll, we'll go on as long as we have to go on but the longer we go the more people die the more money that's wasted the more people in, in this country do not get the help that they need to have a better life. I'm Melissa Hill. And what's your feeling about what happened? Um, it was an amazing experience, I think, just seeing if that many people willing to risk arrest in front of the White House. I mean, this was an open act of civil resistance. People were down there. They're going to say, we're not going to leave here. We're going to speak our mind. We're going to basically make, a, hopefully, a loud statement and have people see that we're just tired of all these wars and all this war on terror here in the wars abroad and you know there's a lot of people speaking for Bradley Manning who right now is basically being tortured in solitary confinement and that was one of the other themes you know we we're here supporting WikiLeaks we're here supporting transparency and openness and we're concerned about everyone whether they're in our, on our soil or they're abroad. We're here, we're peaceful, we're just, we want people, we want our leaders to listen. I mean, Obama wasn't listening that day. A lot of the people in Congress weren't listening and we just felt that this is how we had to take it. We had to go out into the streets. Yeah, very rich with Veterans for Peace. I have a few thoughts about it. First of all, I thought the whole event was just kind of a beautiful 
the snow, as the, as the event started happening, the snow started falling. And it was just, a, just such a beautiful scene, the, the dark trees and the White House and the, the Veterans for Peace flags, and it was just really a beautiful scene. And there was a, a gal that read uh, a letter that was sent to us from Leonard Peltier. And at the close of the statement, he talked about the first snow being the sign for new tracks. And this was the first snow in uh, Washington, D.C. And so I thought that was kind of a spiritual kind of an experience there in and of itself, you know, to be hearing from Leonard Peltier, who's in life imprisonment for a crime he didn't commit. And then we single filed into the White House, you know. And so whether it was covered a lot by the mainstream media or not, I believe he knew we were there. And also, the, I think it was talked about, the, it was just a coincidence. It wasn't planned that we would be doing this action on the same day that he'd be giving his speech on the furtherance of the war, you know, continuous into 2014. As far as I know, this is the largest civil disobedience arrest of veterans in front of the White House ever. No, we're gonna we're gonna get a bigger group to go back next time. What do you want to say to the people in Minneapolis? Uh, write and speak out. Otherwise, they're gonna lose their uh, rights. We're gonna lose our First Amendment rights. We have got to all do more to get a stronger message out.